Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rose, Assistant Professor, Department of Anatomy, Government Medical College, Thrissur. In this session, we will be dealing with the development of fetus from third month of intrauterine period till birth of the fetus. So, before moving on to the topic proper, you might have heard about the term low birth weight. What do you mean by low birth weight? Usually, the average weight of a fetus is from 2.5 kg to 4 kg and the length is about 51 centimeters at birth. If you are calling it as a term low birth weight infant, that means the weight is less than 2.5 kg. What could be the reasons for a low birth weight infant? It can be due to intrauterine growth restriction in a full term infant or it can be due to shortened gestation in a preterm infant. So, these are the major reasons for a low birth weight baby. So, before we get to know the details of a low birth weight baby, we need to know how the fetus develops from third month of intrauterine period till birth. So, let us see what are the changes happening to fetus. So, in this session, we will be discussing this topic under the following headings. What do you mean by a gestational period? How you are going to estimate the age of the fetus? What are the changes happening in the fetus? And what are the methods by which we are going to assess this? That is what is meant by prenatal diagnosis and what are the applied aspects? We will be seeing this one by one. So, what do you mean by gestational period? Gestational period can be divided into three trimesters. So, each trimester will be having three months. That means, first trimester means the first three months, second trimester means from fourth to sixth month and the third trimester will be the last three months that is seven to nine months of intrauterine period. So, let us see what are the events occurring during each trimester. So, the first trimester is actually during which the major systems are developed. So, the major systems of the fetus are developed during the first trimester. And what is happening during the second trimester? Second trimester is a time when there is growth of the fetus. Already the systems are developed during the first trimester and the growth of the fetus happens during the second trimester and third trimester is followed by rapid growth. So, usually the fetal anomalies, the major fetal anomalies can be detected during second trimester. Usually we call the fetal period from ninth week till birth. So, that is a time period which we call as fetal period. In this period, we have the maturation of tissues and organs followed by rapid growth of the fetal body. So, fetal period ranges from ninth week of intrauterine period till birth of the baby. Let us see how we are going to estimate the fetal age. So, the length of the fetus can be estimated based on some measurements. The first measurement which we are going to discuss is known as crown rump length or CRL. How you are going to measure this? This is the measurement which we take from the top of the head or crown of the fetus to the bottom of the buttocks or rump. This length is known as crown rump length and this is said to be the method of choice to assess the fetal age in the first trimester. Another measurement which we usually take is known as crown heel length. What do you mean by crown heel length? This is the measurement taken from crown of the head to the heel of the fetus. That means we will start from the crown, we will reach the rump, then to the knee and then to the heel. So, this is actually said to be equivalent 
of standing height in older persons. This is known as crown heel length. Now, what, how will you calculate this crown rump length and crown heel length? Usually, it is with the help of ultrasound. So, ultrasound measurements will be giving you the crown rump length and crown heel length. So, crown rump length estimation will help you to know the size of the fetus, the probable age of the fetus and the expected date of confinement. So, these are the major important information which you will be getting just by assessing the crown rump length that is the size of the fetus, the probable age of the fetus and the expected date of confinement. Let us see how we are going to discuss the duration of pregnancy or how we are going to calculate the duration of pregnancy. The normal gestation period is known as 40 weeks or 280 days after the last menstrual period. That means the first day of last menstrual period plus 9 months plus or minus 7 days. That is how we calculate the normal gestation period. That is 40 weeks or 280 days after the last menstrual period. There is another classification that is known as 266 days or 38 weeks after fertilization. So, this is actually calculated from the point of fertilization till birth of the baby and this is actually 2 weeks shorter than the previous calculation. But this is an easy method because we will be able to know the first day of the last menstrual period from the lady but the time of fertilization we will be able to know only by the help of ultrasound. So, this is the usual calculation which we follow that is if we know the first day of the last menstrual period just add 9 months and plus or minus 7 days you will be getting the date of confinement the expected date of confinement. But uh, this is actually the intrauterine period life which the fetus will be having after fertilization that is 266 days or 38 weeks after fertilization. So, this is actually the fertilized zygote and this is a newborn. So, this duration is only 266 days or 38 weeks but if you are calculating from the first day of last menstrual period till the birth of the newborn this will be actually 280 days or 40 weeks that is 2 weeks more than the previous calculation and this is actually calculated by adding 9 months plus or minus 7 days to the first day of last menstrual period. Now going to the basic measurements in order to calculate the duration of pregnancy they are biparietal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, the length of femur, the fetal length can also be calculated by knowing the foot length which usually correlates with the crown rump length and the weight of the fetus. So, these are the basic measurements which we will be seeing when you do a ultrasound examination. So, biparietal diameter means if you know uh, the distance, the imaginary distance between two parietal prominences that will give you the biparietal diameter and the head circumference will be the circumference at the head and the abdominal circumference will be here and you will be also able to measure the length of the femur and also the length of the foot. Now, what are the changes you expect in the fetus? We have already discussed that the fetal period is from 9 weeks of intrauterine period till birth. Let us divide this whole period into groups of 4 to 5 weeks duration so that we can discuss the changes happening to fetus in a better way. So, the first period is from 9 weeks to 12 weeks. What are the changes you expect? In this time, you will be having the fetal head of almost half the length of the crown heel length. The body length will be increasing rapidly in this period. The face is formed and the primary ossification centers appear. So, this is the first duration which we discuss in the fetal period that means 9 weeks to 12 weeks. And in this period again the upper limb will be having the relative final length. The lower limbs will be somewhat shorter. The external genitalia will be differentiated 
and the physiological umbilical hernia will be almost reduced by the end of 10th week or early 11th week. In this period again erythropoiesis shifts from liver to the spleen. By the end of 12th week the erythropoiesis the process whole process will be shifted from the liver to the spleen. These are the events which are happening during the first lot that is from 9 weeks to 12 weeks and by the end urine will be discharged into the amniotic fluid. Let us see the next portion that is from 13 weeks to 16 weeks. What are the changes happening to the fetus from 13 weeks to 16 weeks? Here again there is a rapid growth for the fetus. The limb length and movement will be increasing but still the quickening is not felt by the mother and the bones become visible in a USG. If you do USG in this period you will be able to visualize the bones and if it is a female primordial ovarian follicles will be formed. The sex of the fetus can be determined at this stage that is if you are doing a USG by 12 to 14 weeks of intrauterine period you will be able to determine the sex of the fetus and again in this period the eyes and ears are positioned. So, this is the period which we just discussed that is from 13 to 16 weeks. Now, we are moving on to the next period that is 17 to 20 weeks of intrauterine period. What are the changes happening to the fetus during this period? So, let us see actually in this period there is slowing down of growth, but quickening will be felt by the mother. The movements will be well appreciated by the mother. So, the first feeling of the fetal movement is known as quickening. So, that will be appreciated by the mother during this period and the fetus will be now covered by a thing known as vernix cachiose. So, the vernix cachiose will be covering the skin of the fetus and this is actually secreted by the fetal sebaceous glands. The fetus will also be covered by fine hair that is known as lanugo. So, lanugo will be actually helping to hold the vernix cachiose in position. Brown fat is also formed during the end of the period. Let us move on to the next session that is the 21 to 25 weeks of intrauterine period. So, let us see what are the changes happening during this period that is from 21 weeks to 25 weeks of intrauterine gestation. This is again a period where the fetus gains rapid weight that is rapid weight gain is happening during this period and the skin is actually pink to red in color. There will be rapid eye movements during this period especially during the 21st week and the type 2 pneumocytes will be secreting surfactants by almost 24 weeks of intrauterine period. Now, we are moving on to 26 to 29 weeks of intrauterine period. What are the changes happening to the fetus during this period that is from 26 to 29 weeks of intrauterine period. The fetus is said to be viable if it reaches this period that is even if birth happens the fetus will be able to survive in the outside environment. The CNS controls breathing and body temperature so that uh, the breathing and body temperature will be controlled by the central nervous system. The erythropoiesis will be happening in the bone marrow. So, the bone marrow is said to be the major site of erythropoiesis during 26 to 29 weeks of intrauterine period. And again the fetus will be able to open its eyelids, eyelids will be opened by 26 weeks and toenails will also be present. Now, let us move on to 30 to 34 weeks of intrauterine period. What are the changes happening during this period? The pupillary light reflex will be present. The fetus will survive if born prematurely that is if it is less than 32 weeks it would not be able to survive as it is that in that case of a term infant, but if it is more than 32 weeks it is almost term because the surfactants are already produced and the fetus can survive in the external environment. But the fetus will be viable if it is in the 
previous period that is almost by 24 to 26 weeks the fetus is said to be viable but the fetus will be able to survive if it is born prematurely during this period 30 to 34 weeks. Now we will move on to the, to the next period that is 35 to 38 weeks. What are the changes happening to the fetus from 35 to 38 weeks? During this period the fetus is, will be developing firm grasp and it will be oriented to light. The head and abdominal circumferences are almost equal and later what happens is the abdominal circumference will be more than that of the head circumference. And what is happening at full term? Full term the CRL that means the crown rump length estimated as 360 millimeters. The weight is expected to be 3.5 kg and the male fetuses are said to be a bit longer and they weigh more than the female fetuses. And it is said that the testis will be reaching the scrotum at the time of birth. That is for a full term the testis will be reaching the scrotum. Now let us see what are the methods which we use in order to uh, assess the conditions of the fetus. That is what is meant by prenatal diagnosis. The first and foremost method is ultrasonography, the easiest one available. Then we will be going for a maternal serum screening. Then we will go for chorionic villi sampling, amniocentesis, the fetal blood sampling, this is otherwise known as percutaneous umbilical cord blood sampling. We will go for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and cardiotogography. These are some of the methods by which we assess the development of the fetus. First let us see what do you mean by ultrasonography. This is said to be a non-invasive method using high frequency sound waves. This can be done through the abdomen as well as through the vagina. You call it as transabdominal or transvaginal. The features assessed with the help of ultrasound are the fetal age and growth, uh, whether it is a single fetus or multiple gestations, uh, what about the presenting part of the fetus, uh, whether there is any congenital anomaly, whether there is any uterine anomalies. Uh, you can also assess the amniotic fluid assessment, you can assess the position of placenta, you can also assess the blood flow through the umbilical cord. You can roughly have an idea about the expected date of confinement. You can also assess the pelvic cavity, whether there is any case of contracted pelvis or cephalopelvic disproportion. All these things can be assessed with the help of ultrasound. The fetal age can be calculated based on the measurements of crown rump length during uh, fifth to tenth week of intrauterine period. Biparietal diameter of the skull can also be assessed for calculating fetal age. The other measurements which we look for in order to assess the fetal age are the femur length and abdominal circumference. The congenital anomalies which we can detect with the help of ultrasound are 1 the neural tube defects mainly anencephaly. We can also detect the CVS malformations like uh, the valvular defects, the septal defects. We can assess the facial defects like cleft lip, cleft palate. We can uh, assess the abdominal wall defects like if there is any case of omphalocele or gastroschisis. And in case of Down syndrome, you can look for the nuchal translucency. These are the major defects which we usually come across during our uh, routine antenatal checkup and all these things we can actually pick with the help of ultrasound. Now what do you mean by maternal serum screening? There are some components which we look for in the maternal serum in order to diagnose some clinical conditions. The first and foremost is serum alpha feta protein. Serum alpha fetoprotein is actually produced by the fetal liver during 14 weeks of intrauterine period and this actually reaches maternal circulation through placenta. And there are conditions where you get increased level of alpha fetoprotein and there are conditions where you get decreased levels of alpha fetoprotein and based on this you can suspect some of the clinical conditions. So what are the clinical conditions you expect when there is an increased level of alpha fetoprotein? So the defects which you expect are the neural tube defects, the sacrococcygeal teratoma, abdominal wall defects like omphalocele, gastroschisis, bladder extrophy, 
amniotic band syndrome, intestinal atresia. So, all, in all these conditions, it is said that there is an increase in the alpha fetoprotein. And when will you get a decreased level of alpha fetoprotein? In case of Down syndrome, in case of uh, trisomy 18, in case of triploidy, and in sex chromosomal anomalies. On all these conditions, it is said that the alpha fetoprotein will come down and there will be a decreased level of alpha fetoprotein. Another interesting thing is known as triple test or Kettering or Bart's test. So, what do you mean by a triple test? This is actually a screening test usually done in second trimester of pregnancy that is from 15 to 18 weeks of intrauterine period. And this is actually done to rule out the chromosomal anomalies as well as neural tube defects. So, what are the components which you look for in a triple test? You look for the alpha fetoprotein, you look for the unconjugated estriol and you also look for the beta HCG levels. So, if you are going to look for all these three components together, you call it as triple test or Kettering test. And what are your interpretations based on this test? In case of trisomy 18, otherwise known as Edwards syndrome, all the values will be low. If you look for alpha fetoprotein, it will be low. If you look for unconjugated estriol, it will be low. And if you look for beta HCG, it will be low. So, all the three values will be low in case of trisomy 18 or Edwards syndrome. And what do you mean by Down syndrome? or what are the interpretations which you can make out by measuring these three values in case of Down syndrome. So, in Down syndrome, the HCG level will be high and uh, alpha fetoprotein and unconjugated estriol will be low. So, this is the interpretation which you can make out in case of Down syndrome. Now, let us see another mode of investigation which we do that is known as chorionic villus sampling. What do you mean by chorionic villus sampling? Chorionic villi means from the placenta. So, what are you going to do in a chorionic villus sampling? You are going to insert the needle into the placenta. So, you can reach the placenta either through the abdominal wall, here it is actually done through the abdominal wall or you can reach the placenta through the vagina. So, it can be done transabdominally as well as transvaginally and you can guide the needle with the help of an ultrasound transducer. And uh, you usually take 5 to 30 milligram of the tissue is aspirated with the help of a needle and this is cultured. And what are you going to look for? Usually this is done during 10 to 11 weeks of intrauterine period and from the culture you can have a genetic analysis uh, and you can rule out the chromosomal abnormalities. So, genetic analysis is done from the DNA cultured from the chorionic villi to rule out chromosomal anomalies. And uh, what do you mean by amniocentesis? Here again, this is also an invasive procedure like the chorionic villus sampling. You are going to introduce a needle into the abdominal cavity that is through the abdomen that is transabdominally under the ultrasound guidance. And what are you going to do? You are going to withdraw 20 to 30 ml of fluid and uh, it is actually not performed before 14 weeks because the volume of lyca will be very less and there will be high chance of injuring the fetus. So, it is not usually advised to do before 14 weeks of intrauterine period. The fluid, what are you going for, uh, to look for in the amniotic fluid? The fluid is analyzed for alpha fetoprotein, acetylcholine, esterase. You can also look for the sloughed of fetal cells uh, which will help you to do karyotyping. You can also do a polymerase chain reaction and genotyping to rule out the genetic anomalies. All these things can be done with the help of amniocentesis. Another method, another routine investigation though not routinely done if you are suspecting something is known as fetal blood sampling. This is otherwise known as percutaneous umbilical cord blood sampling. And this is usually done during the period of 24 to 34 weeks of gestation. The fetal blood samples are taken for chromosomal analysis. We will come to another topic that is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. What do you mean by pre-implantation genetic diagnosis? As the term implies, this is done 
before the implantation of the blastocyst. So what, when will this happen? Is it possible if the uh, fertilization is happening uh, in vivo? Not possible. This is usually done when the fertilization is happening in vitro. That is if the fertilization is happening outside, you have the blastocyst with you or you have the morula with you and you can go for the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So during in vitro fertilization or IVF, the cells are taken and analyzed from the human embryo for genetic abnormalities before implantation. That means you have the fertilized cells and you are individually taking out these cells and looking for any chromosomal anomalies. And if you are having abnormal cells, you are not allowing them to get implanted and you are allowing only the normal cells to implant within the uterine cavity. And this will prevent genetic disorders from being passed on to the child. So this is actually what is happening during pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Another method is known as cardiotocography or CTG. And what are you planning to do with CTG? This actually records the uterine contractions during pregnancy. So you have two props kept over the abdomen of the mother. One prop is to detect the uterine contractions during pregnancy and another prop is to detect the fetal heartbeat and you will get the recordings from the CTG machine as cardiotocograph. So the recordings are mainly for the uterine contractions during pregnancy as well as for the fetal heart sounds. This is usually done in third trimester to monitor the fetal well-being. Coming to the clinical aspects, we have already discussed about a low birth weight infant. The average size we expect at term is from 2.5 kg to 4 kg and average length is 51 centimeters. If you want to call a newborn as term low birth weight infant, it means the weight is less than 2.5 kg and the usual reasons are intrauterine growth restriction in a full term infant and shortened gestation in a preterm infant. The growth promoting factor before and after birth is known as insulin like growth factor 1 IGF1. If there is any mutation in IGF1 gene that will result in intrauterine growth retardation. After birth actually this IGF1 is synthesized under the influence of growth hormone. So if there is any mutation in growth hormone receptor that condition is known as Larenz dwarfism and this will be having short stature as well as blue sclera. So Larenz dwarfism consists of short stature as well as blue sclera. But there won't be any intrauterine growth retardation since the IGF-1 during prenatal period is not under the control of growth hormone. So in case of growth hormone deficiency leading on to Larenz dwarfism, that child won't be having any signs of IUGR because the insulin like growth factor 1 which is deciding the growth inside the uterine cavity is not under the control of growth hormone. So to summarize we have discussed about the gestational period, how we are going to calculate the gestation period uh, from the point of fertilization as well as from the point of the first day of the last menstrual period how you will be assessing the fetal age based on the different measurements which you can take with the help of ultrasound, what are the changes happening to fetus from the ninth week of intrauterine period till birth, we have just divided it into groups of four or five weeks and we have assessed what are the changes happening to the fetus in each group. Uh, we have seen the different modes of assessment that is prenatal diagnostic methods which we usually come across during uh, the antenatal period such so checkups and some of the applied aspects. So this is all about uh, the development of fetus from third month till birth. Thank you.